Cecilia says she's bad. I said, no wonder Cecilia did tell me I didn't know what I was getting into. That is the evidence and the proof that you want it. Charles D. Wood. That is the poisoning. That is the extortion. That is the chasing away of the signers that I had to go and replace. And they believe me, I had to replace Tabat with De Krenzer. And De Krenzer was poisoned the same way. And then I had to get Yates. And then I had to get the one that I have now, my dear Hot. Because when I went and told Cecilia the story of how she's been harassing my family, proof harass, she called my daughter in Georgia because of inaudible. So come to New York and renew that contract on my behalf. So that's why when I told the story to Cecilia, oh, so you really don't know what you're getting into. She said it for you twice, Wood. I said I didn't know. I said I thought I would just do something one time. That's all I said. Sara, what did you think you were getting into when you first signed the contract? Sara, when I signed it, I told her I was getting the impression that everybody that I saw on that contract, on that paper, she came signature, you know, get together and support. There was no such thing. Sara, what did you think the petition was for? Salako, she said it was for a program. I never watched the program. Oh, when I asked her, I said, what's your program all about? She said, human rights. I did not say that. I said, rights. And when she said human rights, you know, I signed up for it. Sara, what did you do after she said that something had, is going to happen to you? Bad is going to happen to you. So after she said that, I yelled and I said, Okay, you know what? I'm going to the police station and report you that you're threatening me on the phone. Then at that time, I didn't hear anything from her anymore. I thought everything was over. So I put the phone down and I had my friend to stay in my store and I went to the police station and when I got there Officer Lewis was there and I explained I gave to him her name her phone number and I showed to Officer Lewis I had just spoke to her I told the story to her to him and I said I just got off the phone and this is what she said to me and he picked up the phone and he called that number and left a professional nice message to her phone number that said, you know, a woman so-and-so over here, you know that you are harassing her on the phone, you know to stop the harassment. Yeah? Where's, his, where's my side of the story and where's his evidence? You want evidence, Wood? Where's the evidence for that? And besides, Officer Lewis has no jurisdiction over somebody three counties away. That was, I was right there, that's inaudible, you know, and uh, I went back. That was the last time, last date, except June 7th, when I saw her, never see her, never talk to her, no contact with her, no, but tons of mails in my box with name calling. She called me one of the letters she wrote me, she called me an immigrant. I called her a defendant. That's what she is. And that's how the envelope was addressed. Defendant, Taibat Salako. Is that immigrant? The court, uh, Judge Wood, immigrant? Oh, no, Glendora says, a what? And Judge Wood says, immigrant. Salako, immigrant, immigrant like these, not supposed to talk like this in the United States. And she called me a narcotic, a rage. She said, I went in a rage. Glendora, what? Salako, you said I went in a rage. All name calling in my mailbox. Glendora, what was it, please? I said she went into a neurotic rage and she thinks that's narcotic. Glendora, what was it, please? Judge Wood, I believe that was a narcotic rage. Salako, yeah, Glendora, a neurotic rage. Page 116. Salako, well, whatever. Sarak, we rest. 
Glendora, no, you do not rest. The court, well, E. Glendora, I think I have a right to cross-examine. The court, yes, you do. But he's resting. Now it's your opportunity to ask questions on Miss Salako regarding what she just testified to. Glendora, Tybot, what does a petition look like? Doesn't it have one name after another, after another, after another, after another? Salako, yes, that is what you brought to my store. No, no, it isn't. I have a copy of what you signed. I didn't bring any such. Salako, I'm not talking about what I signed. I'm talking about what you brought into the store to show me all the signatures of people that sign up. Glendora, okay, that is wrong. That did not happen. Judge Wood, okay, just ask her questions and then... Uh, Glendora, and then what? And then make a closing statement. At this point, you're asking her questions. Salako, ask me questions. Judge Wood, ask her questions and then I'll let you sum up at the end. Glendora, Ty Bot, did you say that Cecilia said to you that you didn't know what you were getting into? Yes. How's that for evidence, Wood? And if the others had been here, they would have testified the same. Salako, yes. Glendora, hmm. Ty Bot, doesn't that prove my point about Cecilia and Christine chasing away my signers? Sara, objection. I object to that question. Of course you would, because it's the truth, Sara, and you can't get out of it. The court, sustained. Yeah, well, what's your grounds, Mr. Wood? Glenn, Dora, on what grounds? Judge, the question is calling for the witness to make a legal conclusion, and that's up to me to do. That's my job. I wish you would have and made the right ones. Glendora, I object to that. I think it's prima facie. Did I send you? Did I try to help you? That I would, if you would come up on the train, go to Hudson, that I would show you around where you could possibly open one of your African variety stores on Warren Street? Yes. And then what did I tell you? Glendora, you didn't tell me anything, you Salako. I So folks, here we are, into our sixth hour of reporting to you the court failure of one Charles D. Wood and the lying and covering up of one Walter A. Sarok and the fugitivism and the guilt of one Christine Savarino who violated public access and who violated Americanism. Let's see, do you know where we left off? I think it was page 118. Uh, Salako. Wait, uh, Judge. Okay, hold on. Just answer her questions. Don't pose questions back to her. Salako. Okay, no. Glendora. This tons of mail that you refer to, were those not legal papers? Salako, yes, some of them. Glendora, well, I want her to produce what she said aren't legal papers. That's all they were. Are you aware that you have to serve all parties? Sarah, objection. Glendora, on what grounds? Sarah, asking for legal conclusion. Judge Wood, all right, let's 
resolve this by saying Miss Salako has two weeks just like you had two and that should be just as you had two weeks to provide the receipts and she has two weeks to provide copies of any non-legal papers that ended up in her mailbox that she says was a result of you and you will have one week to respond which I guess that would take you to the 17th like they had and that should be as they had well there were never, no such papers ever came okay these were legal papers that had to be served upon Saibot because she was a defendant because I had no proof that Sarok was representing her Glendora, what were her dates? Judge Wood, two weeks. The eighth, it's her submission to the court, which a copy will be to you, would be by November 8th. Your response, if any is desired, would not need to be provided postmarked no later than November 17th. Glendora, thank you. Sarah, this is her understanding of what legal papers are, obviously. Glendora. Taibat, do you think being called an immigrant is a negative thing? Sara, objection to this line of testimony. It's way off base. Judge Wood, it's not relevant. Whatever was in the papers. Glendora, not in the papers. She's just said now that I called her an immigrant. Judge Wood, I think she said it was in papers. Salako, yeah, it was written. Sara, I could show you the papers. You already have the copy of them. But he doesn't read. Uh, Judge Wood, if it was part of the papers that were served on her, it's not relevant. Glendor, okay, I say to you that's not a negative conversation. Judge Wood, okay, Glendora, and I say to you that she was never presented a petition. Judge Wood, I think we're all immigrants at one point or another, most of us except the Native Americans. Glendora, I think so, mine were in 1637, and I say to you that she was never asked to sign a petition. She was asked to sign, I told her that cable vision would not cable cast my program, unless a local resident signed my this application. Will you sign it, please? And that's all that she signed. Was that application? Sorry. Right. I don't know if she's presenting testimony or questioning. Judge Wood, she's presenting testimony at this time, which I'm allowing. Any other questions for Miss Salako? Glendora, no, I rest. We're up to page 121, with only four to go. Judge Wood, did you wish to sum up in any other way after she's given that testimony? I take it there's no redirect? Sara, other than you were also named as a defendant in White Plains, correct? Salako, yes. Sara, that's all. Salako, I didn't show up and I think it was dismissed. Sarak, okay. Glendora, are you clear on that? She was sued in White Plains and Officer Lewis, but White Plains said the addresses were not distinct enough for them and they were wrong about that. Court, okay. This was Judge Press? It was all of them. Press, Hansberry, and the arbitrator. Judge Wood, okay, all right. Glendora. And anyway, so they just stopped the case against Taibat and against Officer Lewis. So that's why they were sued in the Yorkers court. Sara, just for the record, if we're stating, if we're making statements, while we have no information from the clerk's office, we just believe that these cases actually were dismissed against those individuals that may have changed well
I don't have an order that they were dismissed. They're still defendants in the White Plains City Court. Judge Wood, are you saying they're outstanding or that the case was decided in Lindor? They dropped it. They just dropped the whole thing, except for Cecilia. Sarah, I have nothing for formal saying what happened to Judge Wood. All right. Sara, it was Miss Masterelli, as we discussed earlier, there was a default judgment against her, and she's the one that we were referring, Your Honor, to earlier. Judge Wood, okay, anything else? And Judge Wood, if you'd only read the papers before you came to court, we wouldn't have to go through all this. Judge Wood, okay, anything else, Glendora? No. Judge Wood, anything else, Mr. Sara? Mr. Sara, wouldn't you know? Wouldn't he? See, you know, he's rest, he's through, he's not going to ask anybody, but he always comes back. Mr. Sara, Your Honor, just to expedite things rather than asking a closing argument, making a closing argument, I would ask Your Honor if the court desires to look at legal authority that we cited in our motion to dismiss on the same basis that we would say, your motion to dismiss was completely illegal. You don't make motions to dismiss. You don't have motion practice in small claims. No summary judgments. If the court desires to look at legal authority that we cited in our motion to dismiss, on the same basis we would say that there's no evidence and no claims presented here, and in conjunction with that, there's the two decisions that I provided to the court. Why didn't you provide any denial of what Christine Savarino did? Those would be the legal basis for our argument that the claims have no validity and should be dismissed. Well, he didn't disprove them, did he? He didn't disprove that Savarino chased away my signers and I had proof that she did. He didn't disprove that I went and got new signers and the record shows that I did because there are new signers there. He didn't disprove that my odd dominant, he never mentioned it, he never challenged it, he never denied it, and if he didn't deny it, then he admitted it. Judge Wood, all right, Glendora, to that I say, Mrs. Christine Savarino is not here to give that knowledge to the court. Sora, these are legal memorandums. Judge Wood, okay, Glendora, she's not here to give that knowledge to the court. Judge Wood, all right, I'm offering this option to both sides, okay? It's now three minutes to six. You can each have a minute and a half to sum up if you'd like, or if you want to submit papers, you can submit a memorandum if you'd like. Mr. Sorok has indicated that he's not going to submit a formal memorandum, that he's just... going to submit, that he's just requesting the court look at the cases that he cited in his... How does any of that absolve Christine Savarino for chasing away Glendora signers, causing her to go out and get new signers, and causing her to spend $5,000? How does that absolve Christine Savarino of those damages? Sorok, and also, as I said, the decisions, I think, are which I handed in, are referred to in the brief. Why don't you defend on the merits? Because you can't. You know that Christine did what she did, and you know it was wrong, and you know that Glendora deserves the $5,000. Judge Wood, okay, would you like to put together a formal memorandum of law, or would you like to just take, I'll give you the next two minutes. Glendora, a formal memorandum of law is written or oral. Judge Wood, if there's any case law you want to cite in support of your position. 
Glendora, written or oral? Judge Wood, written. I'm not asking you to cite things off the top of your head, although I have no doubt you could. I'm asking if you would like to submit a letter brief, some sort of memo of law indicating the law that you would like me to look at. Well, I did that, and he didn't look at it. Glendora, well, that's very kind and generous of you, but I am weary of this litigation. The court, okay, all right. Sara, Your Honor, there's only one thing I'm not sure of. It was in our briefs. See how he goes? Why do you let him do that, Wood? He tells you over and over again he's through. And then he keeps coming back and coming back and elongating this and making billable time. So Glendora says he goes on and on and on and on. He's through. He's through. He's six times through and he's still saying on, going on. Judge Wood, Mr. Sara. Sara, Your Honor, just one thing I'm not sure is in our moving brief, but we just submit as a matter of law that extortion is a criminal claim and not a civil claim. His moving brief has already been denied. Uh, and and, and I, I handed it right back to him. I never want to see it again. It, I was hours and hours and dollars and dollars and labor and labor correcting his lies. And I don't want to do it again. Uh, that the law, that extortion is a criminal claim, not a civil claim. Well, it is a civil claim, okay? And I'll say it again. Title 18, the United States Code, the Criminal Code, RICO, Racketeer Influence Crime Organization, Section 1963, there is a civil RICO. Judge Wood, very good. All right. Thank you, everyone. You'll get a decision in the mail. Rondor, I want to say God bless you all, all of you. Judge Wood, thank you. Remember the deadlines. Two weeks for each side on the other things to be submitted. Glendora, and remember, God bless you all. Judge Wood, thank you very much. We're adjourned. That was three hours. Three hours of incompetence. Three hours of unpreparedness. Three hours of not fully familiar with the facts and circumstances. And it has taken five hours and a half to read this to you. And dot com has been so patient. She sat here through the whole thing. And when I finish an hour of this at a time, I would take her out for a walk. And she is so appealing and endearing when she goes for a walk. I go about 60 feet ahead of her and she won't move. And I call her. And then she comes thundering as fast as she can with her great big fluffy tail straight up in the air. Well, I want to say to you this. One, Ephesians 5. Two, be imitators of God. Three, walk in love. Four, the sweet smelling aroma. Five, acting as the saints. Six, giving up thanks. Seven, inheritance. Eight, deceive you with empty words. This all pertains to what I just read you. Nine, the fruits of the Spirit. Ten, goodness. Eleven, righteousness. Twelve, truth. 
regardless of what these bad people did. That's what we have. And that will take care of us just fine. I'm sorry that the audio mechanisms need uh, AA batteries. So instead of their singing you a song, I'll sing you a song. Nearer, my God, to Thee, nearer to Thee, even though it be across that raiseth me. So, so my song would be nearer, my God, to Thee, nearer, my God, to Thee, nearer to Thee. And we're not going to let them keep us from that. And now let me see, folks, if I've got any announcements. If you have any announcements, I will help you. I will help you with your announcements. And so many people call who have gone through this. This is uh, Dr. Uh, oh, you know what? A light has gone out. can't see this. is Dr. Johnson. I'd like to get a good picture of him. Did this light go out too, dot com? Electromagnetic waves. Here's Dr. Johnson's picture, but you still can't see it well. So we'll have to do audio announcements, no video announcements. Effective uh, disqualification of judge by reason of interest. That's you, Wood. Uh, Augusta, Maine, public access. Anthony Ciro in... Hudson Falls, New York, is so brave and all by himself he puts out his newsletter, his newspaper and he stands up for the justice system and a true American and he just doesn't give up and he does it all by himself. God bless you, Anthony. I should send you another donation. And here for you, Judge Ruud, I would like to have you read the United States Code, Title 28, Rule 1654, about a pro se, and how you let that lawyer and your interests and your private interests just run all over the trial. And so Judge Wood is on the who to sue list, and don't you ever say that a judge is immune. A judge is not immune. And what's the law on that? That's Title 42 of the United States Code, Civil Rights, Civil Rights, 1993. Excuse me, 1983. That any person who violates your civil rights is liable to you. And any person is a judge. <laughs> 